Hello YouTube, today I'm going to talk about um, what programming language should you learn? Some of you know, um, I went to a coding bootcamp and that's where I got uh, the majority of my programming knowledge. I started learning, um, well, I started actually learning programming with Python. I actually went for like a year and I went on and off uh, trying to learn Python. I learned all, all the way to object-oriented programming, but I never got the grasp of it uh, pretty well. And the thing with Python is that because it, it's very difficult to implement what you know in Python, I actually kind of left it on the side and I started learning JavaScript. So what, why did I start learning JavaScript? Well, the thing with JavaScript though is that it is everywhere in the web. And um, I actually wanted to, uh, instead of doing do Python, <laughs> I actually wanted to do mobile development. And I read that in order to do mobile development and showcase your apps, it was always good to have a website as a portfolio, you know, as, as, as a medium of, uh, of like showcasing your your products or, or software or whatever you were showcasing and it would serve like um, yeah as a way of, of of a portfolio where you where people could see all your work so I said like okay I'm gonna learn web development and mobile development at the same time little I know that it's really complicated to learn any of uh, those um, programming um, skills, um, let alone mobile development. So actually, I I started learning both at the same time for a month. I went crazy and I decided, okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna like focus on one thing, and then I'm gonna focus on another thing. Now, given at the time that I was learning HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, jQuery, etc., and and if you compare that to Objective C, I was learning Objective C at the time. Objective-C is way harder than implementing HTML and CSS. I think everyone is going to agree with me on that. So I told myself that I was going to learn web development first because it was an easier uh, step to take in order to learn web development, uh, programming in general. And then later when I would get comfortable enough, I, I would uh, jump back to mobile, de mobile de development. So at that time, uh, Swift came out and Objective-C, uh, well, it's not that people stop coding in programming in Objective-C, but you know how Apple can be. When they release something, they really push it and they really force uh, people, their, they force their environment in, into people. You know, like with uh, no headphone jack, uh, Swift was, I mean, it was not forced, but it was, really well supported and therefore there was a really good um, acceptance of, of the new programming language so yeah at that time um, after I, 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 I didn't drop but I put a I put mobile development on the side so it came out so so I knew that there was like a more not so complicated complicated way of learning mobile development so you know I had that like um, how do you say like I, I made a mental note of it so as I said I continue learning uh, web web development so for web development what are the languages that you need JavaScript uh, HTML and CSS which in reality HTML and CSS are not really programming languages because there's no really logic that you can do with HTML and CSS nonetheless if you're gonna do web development it's fundamental that you know HTML and CSS. There's no way around it. Uh, now JavaScript, I could argue it's one of the easiest languages to learn, but also if it's learned well, they can, um, JavaScript can really empower you and you can do really complicated and cool things with JavaScript. So yeah, I support people learning JavaScript as their first language. I do believe it's one of the simplest art, uh, out there. Now, there's also various uh, languages out there. It's not only web development and mobile development. Uh, for mobile development, by the way, uh, now that I'm 
um, talking about mobile development too. There's Swift, the uh, Swift four right now, which is what people uh, nowadays use more for iOS development. There's also Objective C, but um, I think there's 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 starting to be more and more content in Swift four that Objective C. Um, it's only like uh, not legacy code, but like you know, you may you may find some projects where where you just need to mine. Uh, maintain that code but not really you won't really create any more new software with Objective C so then so so yeah Swift 4 is what uh, people use nowadays for iOS development now um, for Android right now which is uh, I wouldn't say the counterpart but the competition if you may say um, there's Java for Android development right now a, a new recent language called Kotlin came out and Google seems to be uh, really uh, excited and they really back, backed up uh, this new language called Kotlin. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 I feel that Kotlin is kind of like the Swift for, for uh, Android and it may replace Java in the future, but I don't know. Now, uh, talking about uh, Android, um, as I've mentioned Java, I, I'm actually learning Java right now and I think it's an awesome language too. Um, Java, you don't only um, can do a mobile development with Android, but you can also do a web, uh, web development, you can do server-side de server side development, you can do uh, enterprise development. There's so many things that you can do with Java. And that's uh, one of the few things that I'm really excited to learn Java because it's very uh, flexible, if you may say, of what you can do with Java, so I think Java it's a great language to learn. I don't know if it if it's like um, a good language to learn if you don't know any programming prior to learning Java. But uh, nonetheless, people that go to computer science they either have to learn Java or they have to learn C plus plus plus. Sorry. <laughs> uh, C plus plus is also a language where. Well, C++, as people say, is one of the languages that is lower to the level machine. And when, when people say that, it means that you have more manipulation or control when it comes uh, to the usage of the computer. You have to be more specific on, on when you declare your variables and when you declare your uh, memory pointers, etc. Some, some of you may not know what I'm talking about. I honestly don't even know that much about C++. I started learning a little bit of it and I uh, happened to find it a little bit complicated so I just <laughs> left uh, I left it on a pause too. But you know, there's C++ too. Um, C++, what you can do with C++, uh, anything you can think of. Like a lot of the things that you see uh, when it comes to software they're probably written in C++, but the same fact that because you have so much control, but then again, you have to be so, uh, you know, detailed and specific when you write it, it's really complicated to learn. And when you're doing web development, it's overkill to use C++. So you may ask yourself, okay, fine. So what is C++ used for then? So C++ is used for um, graphics and audio, uh, uh, development so like video games but like really good video games like PlayStation 4 type of video games not not the 2d games that you see on a on a website you know it, it, these are like really really complicated video games graphics um, I don't know probably programs for architecture where you need to to um, manipulate graphics at a very high speed and at a very high definition so that's what probably C++ is used for um, virtual reality. I know virtual reality. I mean, you can use C sharp. Uh, C sharp for those of you that, that don't know, it's kind of like the Java response, but from from Microsoft. So Microsoft created like their own language, and um, it's proprietary, which kind of sucks because it would be better if people could uh, program in C sharp in in any platform. But but it's not right now. They actually have a 
a project which is called uh, Netcore. They're trying to make it, oh, I wouldn't say open source, but like people that have Macs like me, <laughs> um, they can use Netcore. And I say this, and I know this because I actually have to learn C sharp for for my daily job, amongst other things. So yeah, um, so there's that. There's C sharp, C plus plus, Java. I've I've talked I've spoken about Python, but not really what you can do with Python. So what you can do with Python basically, um, it's uh, data analysis, um, data. Um, data manipulation, web, web scraping, oh, uh, actually you can do uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, but mainly I see Python as a, like a very science type of programming language niche. So, so if you're interested in like statistics or data analysis, you, you probably wanna go with R or with Python. Um, yeah, so th those are like, Two other languages that you can do those, those are two languages that you can do data analysis with uh what other languages out there that are uh pretty interesting um that i that i know of of course uh i mean there's ruby and rails i've never been programmed in ruby and rails but there's that there's php i also haven't done php um ruby and rails and php are also two of the programming languages where where you can do web development. Um, I have not learned anything about PHP and Ruby or Ruby and Rails, so I cannot say uh, much about the subject. Um, what else? Well, basically, I mean, and th those are one of the main programming languages out there. I'm sure that there's infinite ton more of programming languages out there, but I'm gonna say this. Um, pick the programming language that that you think you're gonna like the most and and how can you like uh think that you're gonna like the most a certain uh programming language well if you want to do web development i would suggest suggest javascript so if you think that you're going to be passionate about web development go for javascript you think you're going to be passionate for mobile development well you kind of have to choose between ios or android Right now, there's um, there's some frameworks or tools in order for you to program in both. Um, there's this um, there's Xamarin for C sharp. There's React Native for JavaScript. But honestly, I don't like them. I have tried React Native and I have not tried C, uh, Xamarin uh, as a C sharp framework. So I wouldn't recommend um, going down that. Uh, path. I would actually recommend for for you to try uh, native mobile development. And so yeah, if, if you think you're going to be passionate about mobile development, just pick and choose. Then if you want to do video games, I think video games, it's a really hard uh, thing to do. But hey, if you're passionate about it, there's nothing going to stop you. So so yeah, you can choose either C Sharp, C -sharp they use Unity or C++, which is kind of like the, the uh, video game ninjas, if you may so, you, if you may say so. So yeah, uh, you can choose that. Uh, there's C, C is kind of like C++ in a way. So if you, know, if you want to do video games or you want to do like really complicated graphics and audio manipul manipulation, you either go for C or C++. C was one of the other languages that I mentioned. But even though they're not the same C++ and C are very, very similar. So yeah. Uh, well, if you want to do data science, of course, you can go for R or Python and, and there's many more. But yeah, I think those are one of the main languages out there that I, I personally recommend. And uh, if you have any questions, please comment on the comment section below. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. And I'll see you again pretty soon.